Well, hi everyone, Steve Patterson here from PhotoshopEssentials.com. In this video, I'll show you how to add a lens flare effect to an image and how to keep the effect non-destructive with Photoshop. I'll be using Photoshop CC, but any recent version will work. Be sure to check out this tutorial on our website where you'll also find my complete text version. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. So here's the image I'll be using and I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. For best results with this effect, you'll want to use an image where you can see your light source. In my case, it's the sun. To apply the lens flare effect, we'll use Photoshop's lens flare filter. But to keep it non-destructive, I'm going to apply the lens flare filter twice. I'll apply it once to position the lens flare exactly where I want it, then I'll undo the effect and then reapply the lens flare filter, but on a separate layer. So let's start by adding our initial lens flare effect. Go up to the filter menu in the menu bar at the top of the screen, choose render, and then choose lens flare. And this opens the lens flare dialog box. Photoshop gives us four different types of lenses we can choose from. We have the 50 to 300 millimeter zoom, the 35 millimeter prime, a 105 millimeter prime, and a movie prime. And we can click on each one to see what the effect looks like in the preview window. We can also adjust the brightness of the lens flare using the brightness slider. I'm going to leave mine set to the default of 100% and I'll go with the 50 to 300 millimeter zoom. To position the lens flare inside the image, click on the spot where you want the center of the lens flare to appear. The target symbol tells us where the center currently is. Ideally, we'll want the center to appear over the light source, which in my case is the sun, so I'll simply click on the sun to move the center into position. We can also click inside the preview window and drag the center around. Again, I'll move mine over the sun. And when you're happy with the way things look, click OK to close out of the dialog box. And here we see my initial lens flare effect. The only problem is I've applied the lens flare directly to my image. If we look in the layers panel, we see that I currently only have one layer, the background layer. And that's the layer that holds my image, which means I've just applied the lens flare effect directly to my image, and I've made a permanent change. That's not the best way to work. Ideally, we want to keep the effect and the original image separate from each other. So now that I have my lens flare exactly where I want it, I'm going to undo the effect by going up to the Edit menu and choosing Undo Lens Flare. And now I'm back to my original image. Before I reapply the lens flare filter, I'm going to add a new layer. To do that, I'll press and hold the Alt key on my keyboard, and that's on a Windows PC. On a Mac, I would press and hold the Option key, and I'll click on the New Layer icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. Holding the Alt or Option key tells Photoshop to first open the New Layer dialog box, where we can give our new layer a name. I'll name mine Lens Flare, and then I'll click OK. And now we see that I have a new layer named Lens Flare above the background layer. And the checkerboard pattern in the preview thumbnail tells us that the layer is currently blank. Photoshop doesn't actually allow us to apply the Lens Flare filter to a blank layer. If I try to do that by going back up to the filter menu and choosing Lens Flare at the top of the list, Photoshop pops open a message telling me that it could not complete the request because the selected area is empty. I'll just click OK. So before we can reapply the lens flare filter, we first need to fill our lens flare layer with a color. To do that, I'll go up to the Edit menu, and I'll choose Fill. And this opens the Fill dialog box. Now we want to fill the layer with black. So set the contents to black. Now in Photoshop CS6 or earlier, the contents option is actually called the use option. So depending on which version of Photoshop you're using, either set the contents to black or the use option to black, and then click OK. And Photoshop fills the layer with black, which is currently blocking our background layer from view. 
So now that we've filled the lens flare layer with a color, let's reapply the lens flare filter by going back up to the filter menu and choosing lens flare. And Photoshop reapplies the lens flare filter using the same settings as before, which means I have my lens flare positioned exactly the way I want it. The only problem is we still can't see our image. So we need a way to blend the lens flare in with the original image. To do that, all we need to do is change the blend mode of the lens flare layer. By default, the blend mode is set to normal. Click on the word normal and change the blend mode to screen. And as soon as we do, Photoshop hides all of that black area and leaves us with just the lens flare in front of the image. Now we can actually adjust the color of the lens flare so that it better matches the image. To do that, I'll go up to the image menu and I'll choose adjustments and then I'll choose hue saturation. And this opens the hue saturation dialog box. To adjust the color, simply click and drag the hue slider. And as we drag it left or right, we cycle through the different colors of the color wheel. I just want to add a bit more warmth to my lens flare. So I'll drag the hue slider to a value of around plus 20. And that just adds a bit more yellow. And then I'll click OK. Now if we look at our lens flare, we can see that the edges are looking too sharp. So let's soften them by adding a bit of blurring. Go up to the filter menu and choose blur and then choose Gaussian Blur. And this opens the Gaussian Blur dialog box. We control the amount of blurring using the radius slider at the bottom. Lower values will add less blurring, and higher radius values will add more blurring. We just want to soften things up a little bit, so in my case, I think a value of around 12 pixels or so works well. And then I'll accept it by clicking OK. Finally, if you find that your lens flare effect is looking too bright, you can lower its intensity simply by lowering the opacity value for the lens flare layer. The more we lower the opacity, the more the original image on the background layer shows through. I'll set my opacity value back to 100% because we can also brighten the lens flare even more simply by duplicating the lens flare layer. To do that, I'll click on it and drag it down onto the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel. And now we see that Photoshop has made a copy of the lens flare layer and placed it above the original. And we see that my lens flare is looking too bright, but I can fine tune the brightness by adjusting the opacity value of that lens flare copy layer. I'll lower mine down to around 20%. And there we have it. That's how to add a lens flare effect to an image and how to keep the effect non-destructive with Photoshop. If you found this video helpful, be sure to click the subscribe button. Check out our website, photoshopessentials.com, where you'll find hundreds of tutorials covering Photoshop basics, image editing, photo effects, text effects, and more. As always, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. I'm Steve Patterson from photoshopessentials.com.